What's going on, everybody? And welcome to another episode of the Crew Review Show. I'm your host, as always, DJ. Joining me, of course, Rex. And far down below, formerly known as the Angry Gnome. Give it up for Kunta Court. Cortez. Cortez. He, he's had a legal name change. Ooh, 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 I actually, I actually haven't had a name change. They just feel like calling me that. So, fuck the both of you for the record. Whatever, Casey. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> All right. In honor of uh, Spider-Man: Homecoming coming out, we are reviewing Amazing Spider-Man Two. You see the sacrifices we make for you guys. <laughs> I could be drunk it's right cool. now. I take a bullet for y'all, so you don't. I have, have to taken be. a bullet from y'all. I mean, if you checked out the past episodes, oh man, and I, you know, I may have made them take a bullet. Granted, I was the one holding the gun. <laughs> I was not prepared for this review. No, they were not. I was not prepared for this review. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we're talking about, as I said, amazing, uh, amazing Spider-Man Two, uh, and one of the reasons why I really wanted to tackle this one is because. Uh, as I mentioned before, Spider-Man Homecoming coming out. But what's interesting about Spider-Man Homecoming is, and it's uh, you know, well, it confirmed there are three villains. Is it confirmed? Confirmed. Double confirmed? Triple confirmed. Triple confirmed. You heard it here first, folks. Uno <laughs> nos tres. <laughs> Kunta, translate. Fuck yourself. I don't remember that in counting, but okay. So... They have three bad guys in Homecoming. The Tinker, Shocker, and Vulture. With rumors of a fourth one with Prowler. Here's a film that did not learn from the uh, Spider-Man 3 and cram three villains in there. But what was interesting about this movie was it decided to have a lot more. There was so much more planned for this film. For them to go and be like, Maybe it's a little too much. Yeah, it's a little too much. It's a little overkill. A little overkill. Take, take that out. <laughs> we'll get into more about that stuff later. Um, let's get her into first thoughts. Rex, what did you think about this when you went to go see it? You saw this in theaters, I right? saw this in theaters. I, I was watched... super hyped about... No, we don't get hyped. We, we stay, stay hyped. hyped. So when we saw this in... <laughs> We're gonna have to explain that reference eventually. <laughs> but um I I was super hyped about this because the first one set the bar pretty damn high for me. Yes, it did. And this one it I'm I'm gonna be very kind. It didn't meet my expectations. In fonder terms, they dropped it low. <laughs> get low, get low, get low. <laughs> <laughs> For all you 90s babies. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, no. Or Kunta. Hello, darkness, my old friend. That's the third one you're thinking of. I've come to <laughs> talk with you again. This is... <laughs> okay. So, I, I saw this in theaters with Rex. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I actually didn't mind Amazing Spider-Man 2 so much the first time around. I couldn't see why everyone was tearing it apart. But we watched it, uh, what, yesterday, two days ago, whenever the hell. I'm blocking it out. Uh, <laughs> Dark days. <laughs> I'm blocking it out. But uh, upon watching it a second time, um, the the problems were, were pretty glaring. And I was... Alright, so... Yeah, I... Seeing it a second time kind of uh, put a lot of these problems in perspective. Very stark relief, <laughs> and uh, I was I was actually amazed at how I didn't see so much of this the first time around. Um, and it's just it's not it's not a great movie. I mean, it's really uh, it's pretty bad actually. And uh, you know, if you take any sort of magnifying glass to it, there are just so many problems. You know, from from start to finish, A to Z, I was just like, wow, very, very disappointed with this movie. Because I like the first Amazing Spider-Man, and as you guys know, I absolutely hate the Sam Raimi trilogy, so uh, 
which puts me in a minority, but I really did, and I actually liked the first Amazing right. Spider-Man and thought that it was really awesome. And so I was like, yeah, great sequel. Ah, ah. Yeah, and right? <laughs> not so much. It doesn't, it doesn't stand up. So... I agree with you on that one. I um, honestly, if I gotta say, if there's ever a Spider-Man sequel to stand above the rest, Spider-Man Two from Sam Raimi. I'm sorry, I know you don't like the Raimi verse, but uh, I'm sorry, it's just I felt that you know that you know you had a good movie and then you had a better follow-up and then you fucked everything over for Part Three. But that's not the film we're re- reviewing right now. Uh-huh. Right, um, <laughs> that'll be for later. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. So um, what did you guys like about this movie? Andrew Garfield. To be honest, I thought he did a fantastic job with what he had. Um, you know, um, the dubstep was amazing. <laughs> you know that that whole that whole itsy bitsy dubstep was uh was pretty clever to me. You know, it's, you know, I, I I could be wrong. I I don't know. I could be wrong, folks. If you think I'm wrong, comment down below. <laughs> But if you think I'm right, hit the like button. Smash that like button. We're not begging for likes, but you know. <laughs> we're, we're not? I thought we were. Uh, beggars can't be choosers. Yeah. Um, what did I like about this? Um, I liked a lot about it the first time I saw it. And again, seeing it the second time has just kind of ruined a lot of that stuff for me. Um... I actually, the, I, I don't know the name of the actor, but this version of Harry Osborn was so much better than James Franco was in the Remy verse. That um, I will agree on. I, did, I mean, I didn't particularly like this this Harry Osborn either, but I think that was by design. No, he was intentionally made, so you didn't like. Yeah, him. but it wasn't like, you know, I, I um, I think that he, the guy with the weird shaped head, whatever his name is, did a really good job. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> his name is Dane uh, DeHan. No, no, no. His name is Weird Head. <laughs> hey, oval is the pr- correct it's, term. It's weird okay. head. <laughs> hey, Oblong. He is. He is. He is weird head for the duration of this uh, broadcast. Um, <laughs> broadcast is live. Broadcast. I mean, you know, live coming across to you from the internet. Fuck it. <laughs> we'll do it live. Coming to you live from uh, a studio apartment. <laughs> uh, he was good. Andrew Garfield uh, did a pretty decent job. Um, as did Emma Stone. Um, I don't. I. I couldn't blame the movie being bad on them. So that's about as far as I'm going to go as far as a compliment is concerned to this movie. <laughs> it's like, I can't blame the actors for the shit that it's, I it's, it's like that old phrase your mom said, if you have nothing nice to say. <laughs> say nothing. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, but that's that's kind of it for me. I got to agree with uh, both of you. I did uh, Andrew Garfield, I love him as Spider-Man. Um, it's interesting. Some people don't, but I've never quite. Yeah, I well, I always say this is what I find interesting because, like, you know, to me, Tobey Maguire was a, he was a good Peter Parker. I did not like his Spider Man. Andrew Garfield, I love his Spider Man. I'm not particularly found a fond of his uh, Peter Parker. That's why I'm looking forward to Homecoming because, from what I've seen from Tom Holland, I think he's got it perfect. That's kind of, that's the way I felt about Christian Bale. I didn't like Christian Bale's Bruce Wayne. Mm. I loved his Batman though. Mm. Um, so We're that being gone. said, I um. I am a Emma Stone fan. I do like her. Uh, and I thought she was pretty good in the film as well. All right. Uh, he says, uh, what, what were you calling her? Uh, Dead Eyes? What was that? We were watching it. You had a name for her. Rex. Rex. I was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> You're about to be drunk. E equals MC Hammond, man. You should be remembered by now. <laughs> Um, yeah, if I told you what was in this, yeah, I would just be like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, I put that in my car. <laughs> um, okay. Wait, so Emma Stone, give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. A few moments later. I got nothing. Wasn't it something about like she, her voice sounds like she's. Smoked- oh, that's what it was. She sounded like she smoked two packs a day for the last 30 fucking years. Hey, guys, would you got like a lap dance? You know that 40-year-old Excuse stripper? Excuse me. Wow. <laughs> Excuse me. That's how she sounds to me. First things first, that is Oscar Award winning. Would you like a lap dance? 
recognize. Really though? I will not respect. Yeah, she you, did. You know, she oh yeah. Well, and, I don't. No, I know that, but I don't. I don't really. I didn't really hear yeah, anything same, wrong same. with her voice. Same. You don't. You you don't hear you it. Know, I don't know. You do. I mean, it's a slight rasp, but I don't. It's not. It doesn't I, sound it don't like bother she, me. No, that that is beyond a slight rasp. She needs to consult a doctor. She needs like a tracheotomy I think the, or some I think shit. The only problem I had with her was that one close up where she just looks really old for some reason. Oh yeah, and the be- uh, towards the beginning when he breaks up for her for like the second yeah, time. Yeah, but it's like for some reason oh, the yeah. camera's just like on. I don't know if the light was harsh or what the <laughs> hell it was. She looked really awful in that one scene. Oh, wish she looked like she hey. had a. Uh... <laughs> don't listen to him, Emma. I got you. But uh, now, and I feel like I put a limiter on this. Three minutes. What did you like? What did you? What did you not like? Three minutes. Yeah. That, Shit. Did no. someone say three, three minutes? minutes? Uh, I was wondering <laughs> if you would have picked up on that. I don't get that uh, reference either, guys. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, what didn't I like? All right. Um, the story. Uh, woo. Woo. Okay. So we were talking about this during the movie. Everything. I know that a plot that a, that a movie's plot is ultimately self-serving. However, um, everything was just a little bit too convenient. Everything in the movie was too convenient. Um, the disease that Harry had, uh, so many other things. It's like why? Because plot. It's oh, like why what, did this happen? Because the plot remember, gets the move. If y'all remember, what, what was it? Mo was with us. He was like, uh, what what disease does he have? The plot. <laughs> yeah, like everything, like all these things. They what, what happened is they had a story. It feels like they had a story before they had a script, obviously, and they were just like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're just gonna, you know, make everything as convenient as possible so that we can tell this story. It doesn't have to make sense. It just has to be on paper. It just has to be there. For instance, uh, uh, Owen Peter in one scene goes on a little rampage in his room and he's tossing things about including his father's the contents of his father's briefcase and his his father had a TI-82 <laughs> calculator Ooh. and he throws it against the fucking wall and of course there are old style subway tokens hidden in the casing because of course because of course yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just leave that as a clue and somebody will break the calculator eventually plot thickens and of course, that's the exact key to the, the the tokens of the key to his father's secret lab, and the clue to where it's hidden. Like I, you know, it, stuff was too convenient. I didn't like the dialogue. Peter comes off as really douchey a lot, which I didn't like because it makes Andrew Garfield look like he's doing a bad job, and I don't think he really was. I think he was doing what the uh, director asked him to do, what the script demanded of him. But Peter's a douche in this movie. Yeah, he's he's a huge. Huge, huge asshole. Like, he keeps <laughs> the shit. Wait, wait. You, are you sure he's a huge, huge asshole? What if he's a huge, huge, huge asshole? He's a, he's a huge, <laughs> huge asshole. Because he keeps, he keeps breaking up with Gwen Stacy. So, like, she even says that during the breakup scene, you know, during the, <laughs> during the first movie. Oh, yeah. Her father made Peter promise, because he found out that Peter was Spider-Man, he made Peter promise that he would break up with Gwen because he didn't want Gwen, Gwen being hurt because he was because she was in proximity to Spider Man, so he decides to break that promise and then he breaks up with her again. And from the dialogue, because she says something to that effect, like "You keep doing this." How many times has he broken up with this poor girl? Yo, when you were a teenager, yo, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. When I was a teenager, you know how many times me and my girlfriend broke up, got back together, broke up, got back together, broke up, got back together. That that's just something you do when you're when you're young and dumb. No, but that's what you do. There's a hidden there's there's an added dimension there because it's like, oh, I, I broke up with you because your father. I promised your father that I would break up with you so you wouldn't get killed. But then I'm gonna get back with you. But then no, your life is important to me. But so is that pussy. But then your life is important <laughs> well, to me. <laughs> I mean, sometimes maybe, maybe she threw it down, and and you know he couldn't find that again. I could. I could be wrong, all right? If you think Gwen Stacy could definitely throw it down, let us know, all right? Comment down below. How many times have I said that so far? I don't even know. Oh, what? Two was, times. Two, hey, two. I'm sorry. I, I was two. thinking about Gwen's pussy. Sorry, my, <laughs> and, my, my mind went elsewhere once you... <laughs> I'm sorry, what were we recording again? <laughs> <laughs> Not the porn, all right? Oh, fuck. Okay. But look, so, so I, I don't want to take up too much time here. 
because uh, I know that you're supposed to be timing me, but uh, uh, oh, like you, you have got gone like, way uh, past your time. Oh no, he's about uh, two, one, and that's all the time we got here today. <laughs> uh, but no, like I just, I, I just didn't, I didn't like a lot of things just went wrong with that movie. Like everybody's, everybody's motivation is for being evil. Twenty four hours later, in the Sam Raimi trilogy, that shit kind of made sense. Like that's the one thing I'm gonna get to Sam Raimi is that at least, at least the the villains being villains made sense. This one, it really kind of doesn't. So that's just, you know, that's my thing. All right, Rex. Are you ready? And go. Um, One, the only thing that did make sense in this movie was Harry Osborn uh, being a villain. He wasn't trying to be an asshole. All he did was ask Spider-Man for his blood so he could study it and try to maybe get, you know, the cure for his disease. And, Spy and you know, Spider-Man was like... No. One could say he was looking for a cure for wellness. That was a... Terrible joke. Uh, <laughs> um, no. Um, so what he did was, um, you know, again, Andrew Garfield was more douchey than he needed to be. But again, when you're young and dumb, you're young and dumb. That's that's the way it was supposed to be written. He was, you know, he's a 30 year old man playing an 18 year old man. Like that's that's just the way it is. That's was how. He, was he 30? I I don't know, but I'm pretty sure he was in his mid 20s at least. Um, I could be wrong. Um, things that went wrong. The dentistry for Jamie Foxx. That costume for Jamie Foxx. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, that dentistry went right. <laughs> exactly. You want your teeth fixed. It you that gap perfectly. You want, your, you want your teeth fixed, yo? Go to that dentistry of Electro. <laughs> I'm saying, just jump just jump into a fucking vat full of electric eels. It'll be fine. And, that, and that's something else that kind of pissed me off. It was like, you know, that, that stereotypical nerd persona where it's like oh my god i got saved by a superhero that's the end all to be all of my life i don't know what it's like to you know i, I have the bald comb over i have the the yeah jamie fox with a comb over why completely unnecessary who thought that that was yo jamie just let your soul glow yo what was with the hair though <laughs> i never nope but glossing over that <laughs> um uh, the dubstep attack. The 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 the. There was so many things that made no sense. The the villain not looked like he could have been Doc Ock, but wasn't. Um, the you know the villain that was well, he wasn't the villain. He was the doc, the evil mad scientist. Um, the script. Hell, the shaky cam was terrible. Why Hollywood? Why? Why is there shaky cam in all of your fucking movies? Can't we just let it go? Can't we just actually make an action scene smooth by making, you know, actors act in them? Wait, but you weren't really complaining about the shaky cam as much as something else when we were watching it. There was one other major complaint you had. The lens flare. I was actually going to get to that, actually, after <laughs> the shaky cam, because that scene in the airplane brought me to that shaky cam situation. Yeah, but that lens flare, though... Come on now, JJ. A I don't even know. I don't know if JJ Abrams started this or if he just took that shit to a new level. But that shit has got to stop. Who fucking directed this, DJ? Hmm? Your time is up, my friend. But to answer your question, Mark Webb. Fuck you. <laughs> no, I can't even blame Mark Webb on this because he, from what he printed, out, you know, had planned. He had a plan for, you know, somewhat of a decent film. I honestly feel this is when it happens when the studio comes in and tinker. Oh, so you, um, how about instead of doing this, you put this in there. Oh, it'll work out great. It'll work out great. Really, Sony? Did it really work out great for you? Hmm? Because you fucked up Spider-Man. Twice. No. No, three times. No. <laughs> well, my calculation, one, two, three, four, five, six. No, four, five times. Five, five. One, two, three, four. No, that's all. I'm not counting movies. I'm counting, you know, the actual character. Oh, that was the second time they fucked him up. Yeah. 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 Or series, if you will. <laughs> they all had right. five. To me, they had five chances to get this shit right, and they got it wrong all five times. Sony, you want to actually have a successful fan, a Spider-Man franchise? Come closer. Closer. All right, too close. Okay. Let Kevin Feige and Marvel Studios do all the work. You sit back, you beach house, you hookers, and you blow. Have a good time, and let the grown-ups work. 
You know what I'm saying? I heard something about hookers and blunts. Yeah, I was just thinking. Hmm. Yeah, it was another Why are we here again? Is that, a, is that a thing that's happening? <laughs> yeah, we, we didn't get the invite. No. Oh. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that's pretty much my like my main gripe. Uh, I didn't like a lot of this. Uh, I didn't like a lot of the stuff with um with Peter and you know like all the stuff like the character development with him. It kind of annoyed me. Um. The, the whole fucking romance between him going on to Gwen, you know, oh, they break up, they get together, they break up. Oh, she's going to Oxford. Oh, he's going to go with her. Oh, fuck. Um, it's just, uh, I did not enjoy the story. I'm sorry. And I don't blame Mark Wick on that. I blame, uh, I blame studio, uh, Sony. I blame the studio. Andrew Garfield blamed the studio also. He, yes, yeah, he, did. he did. He was out publicly saying, no, 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 that wasn't us. That was not uh, that was not my fault. He was, out, was he was out there pulling a Jared Leto like no 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 studio's <laughs> fault. What I filmed is not what I got. <laughs> I don't know who CG who they CG'd in there, mm-hmm. but <laughs> <laughs> and like you were talking about that we were we were having that conversation with Mo because uh, when he's talking to Gwen Stacy and it turns out he's stalking her. And oh yeah. Mo was all like, you know, he's stalking her. And we're all that but he's a superhero. He's a superhero. Yeah, he's a superhero, he's there. He's, he's it's he follows her every day. <laughs> it's ex- once a day, a more, maybe sometimes more. It's ex- <laughs> he protects her. He protects her once a day from a distance with one hand free. <laughs> he 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 uh he's a superhero, so it's acceptable, right? Yeah, I mean, if Superman can do it to Lois Lane, right? <laughs> Word. See? If, if I ever get you know if I ever get uh trumped up on stalker charges, it's okay, officer. I'm I a am a superhero. Captain, fuck it. Well, here are you. Busy D. <laughs> uh, all right. So, let's start with Gnome. Gnome, mm. what are some of the quotes you like from this? Quotes. Um, you know what? I don't think there's really anything memorable. Uh as far as like one liners in this movie, like I just there's nothing, really? nothing even from Paul Giamatti. You know what? Not, could you understand what he was saying half the time? <laughs> like, nothing, nothing really stood out in in the script. Like there was really nothing that did it for me in that way. Okay. Yeah, I, I'll defer to you guys on that. That's a, that's just really I don't have anything. Um, there were a couple of things that I did like. Uh, um, but some clever stuff. Uh, like when um he met up with uh, Harry. Mm-hmm. After his father died, and was like, "Oh, um, what have you been up to? Web design." I thought that was a pretty clever joke. I, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, that was very punny. All right. <laughs> um, and there was another. Like, I forget when it happened, but he was like, "What do you like? Like, you know what I like about being Spider Man? Everything." <laughs> uh, um, you know, there there were some terrible puns in this movie, and some terrible jokes, and some terrible one liners. Um, again, no. If you if you didn't try to intentionally remember it, these weren't memorable one liners. They were just they were just. I'm gonna say they're legally quotes, but <laughs> like 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 Batman and Robin had better one liners in this movie. Did oh yeah, like um, go ahead. Well, there's that the only one that really like really stuck with me is when he kept on fucking with um Electro and calling him Sparkles. And when the electric goes on that whole rant and ends it with, I will be a god to them. And he goes, God named Sparkles? That's the only one that pretty much kind of like stuck with me. Mm. Yeah. Um, let me see. Uh, not, I, I, I got some other quotes here, but nothing that I really even... Uh, nothing that you even want to <laughs> talk about. They're terrible. The, the script was meh at best on this movie. So, I, nothing else on the quote train? No. Nah. Yeah, there's lots of station. Okay. Final thoughts. Turning you guys a minute apiece. All right. Who wants to go first? Well, don't all jump at once. Jesus Christ. I mean, are we, we tossing a, to- a coin here? What are we, what are we doing? <laughs> all right. Wait, there's a coin. Wait, there's, there's a, a coin, coin coming out. Oh, shit. There's a coin coming out. I was only joking. Nah, I got nothing. Oh. <laughs> I could flip a dollar bill. <laughs> See yeah, I don't, I, don't know that that would, I don't know if that would work. <laughs> All right. No. Um, Go. 
Um, hmm. Just not a great movie. I mean, there was there was so much going wrong with it. They tried to do way too much. They tried to set up for the sinister sticks and 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 all these other things, and it just really never, never really took off. And you know, Harry's just a fucking dumb villain. Uh, he really kind of it was is. just a dumb premise. It was a dumb premise. Like it just the movie just didn't really just didn't flow very well. And and uh, you know, like I said, I liked it the first time around, but that second that second examination of it, like you take any good hard look at the movie, and it really doesn't stand up. It's just not. It's not a great movie, you know. It's a, there's a big letdown after the first one because I like the first one, um, so you know I'm really you know I'm looking forward to seeing what Tom Holland can do. But you know uh, that last one, man, woo, uh, <laughs> Amazing Spider-Man two, no, thank you. So those are my final thoughts. I give that one a resounding thumbs down, two thumbs down. Uh, I wish I had more thumbs so I can give the right. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, just yeah, just not just not doing it for me. So uh, Rex. Damn, to the buzzer beater. Boom. Damn. All right, so. All right, ready? Here we go. And go. Not really ready. Um, yeah, again, Gnome hit this nail on the head. It's pretty bad. It's um, It was a terrible script with a terrible premise with too much going on. They, It was clear they had no idea which direction they wanted to go in with this. Um, I'm glad they kind of didn't make a third one because all that would have been is a giant clusterfuck. Um and seeing based what was allegedly could have been in this, it would have been even worse. This is the good version of what they gave us, which is a sad day, my friends. Um, Tom Holland, I wish you the best of luck. You don't, the bar has not been set high for you. So this mo- your movie can suck and still surpass the last five Spider-Man movies. Mainly because you have Robert Downey Jr. in it. So you already get that one up. Um, yeah. Folks, don't, don't. If you see this in your Best Buy bin for like four ninety nine, skip it. No, you come across a collector's edition like we did. Then. Oh, that wasn't me. That was that. That's him. If I was gonna do this, it had to be on four K at least. Yeah, I beat it. All right. Um, my final thoughts. There we go. Um. Yeah, all around bad film. This is the result of when you try to cram too much into one movie. You know, you have multiple villains, and they don't play the main focus on any one villain. It's one thing if you had Electro as the main villain and Green Goblin or Rhino as a, just like you know afterthoughts, fine. But you overdid it a lot to the point that hell, you even have to wind up shoving out Shailene Woodley, who was casted to play Mary Jane Watson, and you took her out. You took out the whole story arc where he's supposed to be involved with his father. We find out he's alive at the end deleted scenes um hell you even those? yes uh, <laughs> there, there was so much taken out this was actually supposed to be an alternate ending as well in which you actually see the um that was a that fierce guy actually going yeah. <laughs> through all uh, their weapons vault where he actually comes across that they have norman's osborne's head still alive really yes wow they, how many... and they took that out this they was only said, one script Yes, this was all in one script. How high were they when they wrote this? Very. How Did you long? not hear the part about the hookers and blow? Uh, I'm sorry. How for... long was that? When the, the, this this would have been the first hour fucking movie. It would have been. And what were you going to do for Amazing Spider-Man 3? Give us 12 fucking villains? <laughs> it's better. Double the number, right? <laughs> oh, man. But that was... If it was that if it was that long and convoluted with three villains, imagine Sinister Six. Oh, oh God. Who? I don't even want to imagine it. Wow. All right. Nope. But if you want to go, folks, do this. Watch Spider-Man 3, then watch Amazing Spider-Man 2, and then go to theaters July 7th, or by the time my, if my calculations are correct, this video should be coming out on July 7th. Watch how it's done. That's our show, folks. I want to thank everyone for watching. That's been the Angry Gnome all the way there, a.k.a. Uh, Kunta Cortez. And Rex, where can people find you? You can find me at Rex Hooker Review um, on Instagram and Twitter. Um, I'm pretty active. I'm actually pretty active on Twitter now. So um, if you want idea, if you want to tweet at me or whatever, if you want to slide up in the tweet DMs. at me, bro, <laughs> slide up in the DMs. That's on IG. Okay, let's. Uh... <laughs> Damn you, Windows. <laughs> um, oh, do me a favor, guys. Smash that like button. Smash the fuck out of it.
You can find me at DJ of Crew Review on Instagram and Twitter. You can find the show on Instagram and Twitter at the Crew Review Show, as well as on YouTube. Thanks everyone for watching. Smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, and if you have any suggestions for future material, hit us up in the comment section. Till next time. I'm watching you. Yeah, I know it's you. I think I'm not. They know who I'm talking about. <laughs>